Hello, my name is Raymond Rumpf, and today I'm going to explain to you fractional derivatives and fractional Fourier transforms. So what is a fractional derivative? Let's start with regular derivatives. And very often we write it this way. We have our derivative operator and we have the superscript A that's describing the order of the derivative, first order, second order, third order. And f of x is the function that we're taking the derivative of. This lets us make a table. Let's have the order of the derivative in the left column and then we'll write that derivative in the right column. When the order of the derivative is zero, that's just the function again. And in this case, we're working with x squared. The first derivative of x squared is 2x. The second derivative of x squared is just two. The third derivative is zero and all the remaining derivatives are just zero. The question is, does anything lie in between? Is there such a thing as a half derivative? What about a 1.67 derivative or a 2.2 derivative? It turns out there's a continuum of derivatives and the derivative order A can be any real number. Here's an animation that animates the function x squared into its first and second derivatives. So right here at the flat line, that was the second derivative. Start at x squared, the first derivative is 2x, and then the second derivative is just two. So it's interesting that there's this continuum of functions in between, and we can watch this function kind of morph from the original function into each of its derivatives. What about a triangle function? Well, a triangle has two discrete slopes. So its first derivative kind of looks like a, a staircase and we can watch that function morph from the original function into its first derivative with all of the fractional derivatives in between. How on earth could we calculate these? Well, let's start with the definition of a derivative. What if we Fourier transform that? Well, remember there's a property of a Fourier transform. The Fourier transform of the derivative of a function is the Fourier transform of the function multiplied by J times omega multiplied by the order A. And already it's becoming apparent that we don't really have to have A be an integer. That can be any number. Let's inverse Fourier transform this equation. Now on the left, we have the inverse Fourier transform of a Fourier transform. So really we're just left with this original argument of the Fourier transform. And here's the equation that I use to calculate fractional derivatives. This is just one way. Now the Fourier transform that I'm using happens to be a fast Fourier transform and I'm doing that in MATLAB. And that's how those animations were created. But I can set A to any number. Now on to fractional Fourier transforms. Here we're looking at a lens. There's light coming in and it's focusing. So this yellow looking thing is some kind of glass that's forming our lens. And when the light comes in, it focuses down and right here is where the light would be super intense. Right before the lens, or even right after, let's introduce something that we call an aperture. And so this blocks part of the light. And it allows, the, in this case, the light in the center to pass through the lens. So when we do that, the light that gets through the lens looks like a square pulse function. And so we can even write that as the rect function. If we were to look at the light at the focal point after having passed through that aperture, we would see a bright focal point and the light kind of ring as it moves away. That is a sync function. A sync function is the Fourier transform of this rectangle function. 
So a lens performs a Fourier transform. The light we see at the focal plane is the Fourier transform of the light right at the lens. It makes sense then that everything in between is the continuum of fractional Fourier transforms. So at the beginning, the order of that Fourier transform is zero, meaning it's the original function. And at the end, the order is one, that's the pure Fourier transform. And now we have a way to actually visualize what do these fractional Fourier transforms look like. 